On November 6th, nearly 26 million Americans will use a touchscreen to vote, a major technical advancement since the 2000 elections that all but guarantees no hanging chads will mar the electoral process. But experts say these machines also come with potential problems. What I'm going to do first is show you that we can actually hijack the machine. They say it can be remarkably easy to hack some of these touchscreen voting machines. We can't show you exactly how it's done for obvious reasons, but for one type of touchscreen device, all you need is a paperclip and $20 worth of electronics to access the machine's hard drive. In under a minute, you can have control of the device and you can change someone's vote remotely. Roger Johnston makes a living exposing security flaws for the U.S. government at Argonne National Laboratory. But even he was taken aback by what he found with some of these voting machines. I mean, it's really fairly shocking. You open these machines up and it's hard to identify much of anything that, that comprises a security feature. Johnston's work has focused on two types of commonly used voting machines, a touchscreen device and a more conventional push-button machine. These types of machines are currently used by 33% of registered voters. Here with a voting machine, we're in a situation where people really aren't thinking about it as a security problem. So I think it's not surprising that the security isn't very good. Security is difficult when you design it in from scratch. If you're not even thinking about security, you're not going to get it, get good security accidentally. For years, experts have been aware of potential security flaws in voting machines. And voting machine companies have tried to protect source code and memory cards that store valid programming. But Johnston says the security holes often come from less than secure hardware rather than the software. Well, we recently become interested in electronic voting machines because it looked to us like uh, the people who were looking at the security of them were mostly computer scientists and cyber hackers. And we thought there were probably other more physical types of attacks that would be easier, probably harder to detect, and possibly even more difficult to have countermeasures for. CNN Money reached out to Dominion and Election Systems and Software, two of the largest manufacturers of machines in the U.S. Neither responded, but on its website, Dominion says, quote, Dominion continuously tests the security limits of all of its products to ensure that your system cannot be compromised and to ensure the accurate results of your election. And Election Systems and Software highlighted its focus on security, saying it offers, quote, the best and most reliable voting solutions to elections administrators and voters around the world. But Johnson says his experience getting into the machines shows more needs to be done. Well, they certainly can design their, their products better to use tags and seals. Um, they can certainly design the interior of the devices so that it's not so easy just to slap in very, very quickly uh, some alien electronics. Experts point out that so far, there's no evidence of hackers actually manipulating votes. And since 2002, the federal government has spent at least $3 billion to modernize the voting process. But with concerns about security, or even errors by election workers, the nonpartisan Verified Voting Foundation says e-voting machines that produce paper receipts might be the key to ensuring secure elections. If a voting system was tampered with, and the software is not counting the votes correctly, and you do a manual check and you find out that the votes are not being counted correctly by the electronics, you can actually go and use the paper ballots and generate the correct total because that's the record that voters had a chance to check. While a majority of the states have moved toward a paper receipt, 13 states, including Ohio, Colorado, and Virginia, will have at least 100,000 voters using machines like the ones hacked at Argonne that don't produce a paper trail to verify the votes. For CNN Money, I'm Jason Sanchez.